In this video, we talk about isomorphic binary structures. So first, let's define a binary structure. But before I do that, I want you to remember what a binary operation is. And a binary operation on a set S is a map from S cross S into S. And you can click on this link above to review binary operations. Now, a binary structure is just a set along with a binary operation defined on that set. For example, the set of integers along with the addition operation is a binary structure. And you will usually see a binary structure written in this format where we have the set S and the binary operation star. And for simplicity, we will just call this structure S. So whenever we see a structure, we will refer to it by the name of the set. Now that we got that definition out of the way, the rest of the video will be dedicated to answering this very important question. And that is, what does it mean to be isomorphic? Well, if we have two structures, we call them isomorphic if they are structurally alike, meaning the only difference between them are the names or symbols used to define the structures. Another way to say this is that they are the same structure, but one of them is just in disguise, so they may look different, but they are actually the same. Let's look at an example. In this example, we have two structures S and T, where S has the set containing elements A, B, and C with the binary operation star, while T has the set containing elements 1, 2, and 3 with the binary operation star prime. And we want to know if these two are isomorphic. So in order for these to be isomorphic, we would need to show that the structure S is really the structure T, just in disguise. So we would need to be able to find a map to transform the structure S into the structure T. So let's break this down a little bit. In order for the map to transform the structure S into the structure T, we need two things from it. First, we need the map to transform the set S into the set T, and second, we need the map to transform the binary operation table on the left to the one on the right. So let's try to find a map that satisfies both 1 and 2. Looking at the first condition, we need a map that changes every element in S to exactly one element in T, and there are six maps that do this which are listed here in this table. Now we have to check to see if any one of these six maps also satisfies condition 2. And if you go through each map, you will see that the only one that satisfies condition 2 is the first one, which sends A to 1, B to 2, and C to 3. Now if we replace every A, B, and C in the left table with 1, 2, and 3 respectively, and change the binary operation symbol star to star prime, we will end up with the exact table we have here on the right. So this tells us that the binary operations star and star prime are actually the same, and the only difference is the notation we used. And from this, we can say that these two structures are isomorphic, and we will use this symbol between the two tables to represent two structures being isomorphic. Now hopefully this gives you an idea of what it means to be isomorphic, but now I want to give a mathematically precise definition. So if we have two structures, S and S prime, we can say they are isomorphic if there exists an isomorphism between them. And an isomorphism is a one-to-one -one function, we'll call it phi, mapping s onto s prime, such that for all x and y in s, we have the following property satisfied, where we have phi of x star y equals phi of x star prime phi of y. And this last part is called the homomorphism property. So an isomorphism is really just a function that renames the elements of s to the elements of t while preserving the structure of the binary operation. And this definition is essentially requiring the same two things as our conditions above. With our first condition, we said we needed to transform the set S into the set T, and this is the same as finding a one-to-one -one function mapping S onto T. And the second condition said we needed to make the left binary operation table into the right, and that's what the homomorphism property is checking for. So let's go back through our example and find an isomorphism. Just like before, there are six one-to-one -one functions mapping S onto T. So we really just need to find the function that satisfies the homomorphism property. To visualize what the homomorphism property is doing, let's change the table on the left using an arbitrary function phi. Now from this, we see that we need the one-to-one -one function phi mapping S onto T to be defined by phi of A equals 1, phi of B equals 2, and phi of C equals 3. Now we suspect that this is our isomorphism, but we still haven't verified that it is a homomorphism. And in order for it to be a homomorphism, we need the homomorphism property to be satisfied for every combination of elements. So let's look at one spot. We'll look at the spot in the first row, second column. On the left table, we have a star b equals c. 
Now since our function sends a to 1 and b to 2, we must look at the right table and whatever 1 star prime 2 outputs must be equivalent to c. Since we know that 1 star prime 2 equals 3, that tells us that c must be equivalent to 3, or we must have 5c equaling 3. And it does, so we have shown that 5a star b, which we can rewrite as 5c, equals 5a star prime 5b. So this combination satisfies the homomorphism property. Let's look at a different combination. This time we'll look at the third row first column. On the left we get c star a equals a, and we know that our function sends c to 3 and a to 1. So we look at the right table and see that 3 star prime 1 outputs 1, which is 5a. So again we have shown that 5c star a equals 5a, which equals 5c star prime 5a. Now if we go through and check each spot, you will see that the homomorphism property holds for all x and y and s. So the function we have defined here is a homomorphism, and from that we can say that this function is also an isomorphism.